What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at what I consider the biggest update to the Legion Go since it's been released. And it's been a little while since we've taken a look at this device on the channel running Windows. So I figured with this recently updated software we'd take a look at it. And so far it's definitely a really nice change when it comes to the Legion Go. Another thing we're also going to be taking a look at in this video is some frame generation from AMD and FSR 3.1 with a few Nixus games just to see how this thing performs. But before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. I've just resorted to capturing the screen here so we could get a better look at everything. And already, right off the bat, as soon as we start up Legion Space, you might notice it looks a lot different. We've got our account over here, and unfortunately, I could not change my name here, but I can change an image. And they seem to be using a lot of AI stuff recently, uh, Legion and Lenovo. We're going to go with this cat here. Download center, help center, online support. Okay, so that's all great. We can switch our account. Order center, if you've got anything on order from Lenovo. Moving over to store. This is something I personally haven't ever used, but I have seen a lot of discounts here, uh, mainly on stuff that I already own, so I really haven't had a need. Looks like we get a Legion VIP discount, and I'm not exactly sure where this is pulling from, but we'll check one out here. Let's go for, uh, let's do Spider-Man Remastered. So this is not using Steam. Definitely looks like Steam. I think, uh, oh, it's using Games Planet. So this is kind of a third-party marketplace. Savings, 20 bucks. Yeah, Steam Key right here. But let's check another one just to see. I think this is going to be a mix. So for Red Dead 2, purchase now. Yeah, Rockstar Key, Steam Key. So definitely keep an eye out. Not everything is going to be coming from Steam through their marketplace here. But again, I have seen some really decent discounts. So if there's games you don't own, it might be worth it in the end. Uh, but yeah, I've just been kind of sticking to Steam. Moving over to Library. This is all of the games I have pre-installed right now on the internal hard drive. We can refresh. We can add a manual game. And taking a look at the game platforms. Xbox, Epic, Ubisoft Connect, Steam, GOG, uh, Rockstar, and Giant Software. So I'm guessing that, you know, through their marketplace, you're going to be able to purchase keys from, let's say, Xbox, Ubisoft, everything that's listed here right now. And again, if you've got games you want to add, not a problem to do so with the add game. Go directly to a path of that game if you need to. You might notice we've got a little bit of coloration here with things that I've selected. This can actually be changed, and it's dependent on the controller's RGB, which I thought was pretty cool. From the controller section here, joystick light. Let's just go ahead and move this. Now it's not complete RGB across the board. We've got the basic colors, but if we wanted to go yellow, you can see that everything's set up in yellow now. I personally think that this is a really cool touch here. Now, if we went to, let's say uh, dynamic color, it's not gonna change throughout. So it's basically a solid color and we're just gonna go back to purple. I do think it looks really good. And this applies over here in our settings section. So as you can see, we've got that color going on. If it was yellow, everything would be yellow here. But this is kind of a major overhaul here when it comes to the settings. I love the look of this section. Right here, we've got our fan speed and we've got our fan mode. I'm in smart mode right now. CPU temperature and speed plus usage with the gauge here. GPU usage and temperature. Performance, display, audio, disk drives, general. We're going to go to general here and see what we've got. 
uh, language, 24 hour clock, uh, boot automatically into Legion space, power button light can be disabled, optimized battery charging. Yeah, they've added quite a lot in here. Disk drives, I've just got that one terabyte drive installed. We can check for updates here and we can also go to Windows updates. So this is actually gonna be our Lenovo or Legion updates. And I think I'm fully up to date right now. Yep, back into settings, audio. Obviously we can swap that out. I'm connected to my game capture right now, uh, built-in microphone. It's gonna be our input device. Display, up to 1600p, 2560 by 1600 with that Legion display up to 144 hertz. Super resolution can be enabled here. And of course, performance, my favorite section. So just moving down a bit, you've got a little more to work with at the bottom. Right now we're in performance mode. We've got a thermal mode, quiet, balance, performance, and custom. Fan mode is set to smart. We could go to full speed or we could customize this if we want to. Down here, we've got an FPS limiter and the OS power mode. So if I wanted to go to power saving, give it a second, everything switches over. Thermal mode is now quiet, got a very low fan speed because we're not pushing that much power. OS mode is set to efficiency. And of course, we've got two different custom presets. So let's say if I wanted to go with custom two here, I could set this up in any thermal mode that's offered. We can also fully customize this fan speed here. So we've got a curve that we can adjust. But for my custom two preset, what I'm gonna do is head right here to our TDP. I can take this to 15 watts. I'm also gonna go to balance mode. It's already set there in our OS power mode. So this is gonna be kind of my balance mode at 15 watts. And then when I really wanna crank up the performance, we can go to custom, taking this up to 30 watts. So that's as high as we can go. There's actually a little bit of a boost up to 40 for a few seconds down to 35. And then, you know, across the board, we've got a sustained 30 watt TDP on the Legion Go. Fan curve, full speed will get pretty loud here, but it's gonna keep it nice and chilly. And we definitely wanna be in performance mode. Can also set up that FPS limiter. We can set this as low as I believe 30. Yeah, it'll go down there. All the way up to 144. I'm gonna leave this off for now. But yeah, really do like the new look they've come up with here. Uh, lots of new settings that we can kind of mess around with, get this thing performing even better than it did before. Going back to the controller section, really cool animation. We've set up that RGB to kind of change the color of Legion space for us. Full button mapping, current profile set up as gamepad. Of course, the Legion Go has those detachable controllers. So we can fully customize all of the buttons on this. We took a look at the joystick lighting, joystick settings. Dead zones can be fully adjusted. I'm gonna go back to default for all. Trigger settings. I've got mine from zero to 100%, but this can be adjusted. So if you wanted to make sure that you've got a little every time you start pressing that, you can take this up a bit but I kind of like having full control there because most of the stuff I like to play are racing games and I want full control over those triggers. And if you didn't want to go to 100%, of course, you could take this down. You can restore the defaults if you want to. And default seems to be 5% to 95, but what I've done here is take it to zero and 100 over here, but it's really up to you. And finally here, we've got more settings. Vibration. Mine's up at strong, and I do think that this has some really nice haptics built in. Controller mode, gamepad mode. Input test, so we can test all of these buttons. Everything seems to be working really well with this setup here. That trackpad working. Long press to get out. Gyro behavior. Now this comes in really handy for anybody who wants to use a gyro. There's a couple different modes we can use. As left stick, so our gyro is gonna act as our left stick or we could set it up as our right stick. So if you wanted to aim with that joystick, usually use left stick. If you wanted to move the camera around, you could use it as a right stick. Touchpad can be fully disabled. And sometimes I do find myself accidentally touching that touchpad with uh, my palm or just my thumb. Uh, usually I try not to, but if you really run into an issue, this can be fully disabled now. Controller hibernation, function key shortcut, controller battery status, and we can check for firmware updates for these detachable controllers. What I'm seeing so far, 
really nice. Um, love the new look of this. Definitely feels more modern than the old one did. But there's a little more to it because we also have our quick access menu that's totally been revamped also. Basically, same settings as in Legion Space, but we can use this at any time. It'll overlay on top of a game. Basically, same stuff here. We can change our performance mode, fan curve, on the fly while we're playing a game. Brightness, sound, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. We can change our resolution, refresh rate. And from here, we've got the frame monitor. A simple frame monitor up in the top left-hand corner. And this needs a full screen game in order to uh, show us that FPS. Normal. And we've got all. This is going to give us the CPU usage and temperature. Same thing with the GPU. VRAM, system RAM, battery, fan speed, uh, CPU VR temps, if RSR is on or not. And of course, at the very bottom, we do have FPS, but we need full screen in order for it to monitor. From the overlay, we can also enable Radeon Super Resolution from here. But this is going to come in really handy for a lot of people that just don't want to set up a third-party frame monitoring software like Afterburner. Full controller customization on the go. We've also got some quick settings that we can use right here. Productivity mode, which is going to be kind of their desktop mode. So set external display as primary. And I probably should have did that before I even started this up. Uh, while we're playing some games here, I will give you a look because I do want to give you a look at some frame generation and FSR 3.1 on the Legion Go. But when it comes to the new Legion space, loving what they've done here, it looks a lot more modern and uh, everything's just in the right place now. But now I want to get into a few games here that have recently been updated for AMD's frame generation and FSR 3.1. These games are from Nixus and hopefully down the road more developers kind of follow suit. But let's get into it. So the first game we're going to be testing here is Spider-Man Miles Morales. And I'll just give you a look at a little bit of gameplay here. You can see that we are at 30 watts, so we're in performance mode. Got a little bit of that boost going up. Right now, we're at 1080p, no FSR, medium settings. And we're really hard pressed to get up to 60, maybe up on top of the buildings. Not even without any FSR. Down here at the street, looking at an average of around 42, 43 FPS. In the past with this game, we did have access to FSR 2. We're going to enable FSR 3, which was recently added. So we'll head in here. You can see we're at 1080, medium, upscale, AMD, FSR 3. We're going to keep it at balanced. We'll apply it. And our frame rate does go up uh, quite a bit, but still not at 60, even with that uh, FSR on. So we could drop the resolution down to 900p if you wanted to, or 800p, given that we do have a uh, 16 by 10 aspect ratio display on the Legion. But we have access to AMD's frame generation with FSR 3.1. So take a look at that FPS. We're going to enable frame generation right here. AMD FSR 3 frame generation, keeping this at balanced. If you take a look at the FPS up in the top left hand corner, as soon as I apply this, you'll see it jump up tremendously. So we were sitting around 51, now we're up in the 90s. And even on the street here, you can see we're over 60 FPS at medium settings. Taking FSR 3 to performance is also going to help out, but I wanted to see what we could do here at balance because it's a nice mix. And at 1080 medium, FSR 3.1 at balanced with frame generation on, we're looking at an average in the mid 70s to uh, low 80s here with Spider-Man Miles Morales. And the good thing about this frame generation that's built into the games is it actually works with V-Sync. So if you did want to lock this down at 60, you could do it with frame gen on. When it comes to like AMD's fluid motion frames from the Adrenaline software, with that you just can't use VSync and you do need to be in exclusive full screen mode for that to work. Next one I wanted to test here was Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and this is one that I've been playing quite a bit on the ROG Ally now that they added frame gen. I kind of locked this down at 60 but I want to give you a look here. Right now we're at 1080 medium settings with AMD's FSR 3 set to balance. 
And I'll tell you, this is a harder game to run on these iGPUs. Even setting this down to 720p with no FSR or even FSR set to performance, it still dips under 60 every once in a while. The low, low resolution just doesn't look great. And I wanted to test everything here at 1080. And we're seeing averages in the low 40s with this game, which, uh, you know, isn't great. I mean, it's not the worst. It's something that you could play if you really wanted to. But with the addition of frame generation built into this game, it can get a lot better. Back at the same spot, we're at 1080. And basically all we're going to do here is enable frame generation. FSR 3 is still set at balance. And if you remember, we were in the low 40s in the same exact area when all these enemies showed up. Now, this isn't exactly doubling that frame rate, but it's getting pretty close. I won't just let them pull up on the train because, uh, you know, once there's a lot of enemies and particles on screen, it does really dip down. But in this case, we never go under 60. We're actually seeing averages in the mid to high 60s now. And in my experience, with most games that I've tested, this has been working much better than fluid motion frames did. You know, having it built in to the game itself is definitely the way to go. And we've seen a lot of this from NVIDIA's frame gen technology. So I'm really glad we've got it here. Hopefully we do see more developers integrate this into their games. When it comes to this game, I was pretty impressed by how it performs on these iGPUs. And right now we are at 1080 medium settings. FSR 3 is set to balance, just like the other games. Just wanted to make sure you saw we were at medium. I'm not at low settings or anything like that. We're really close to running this at 60, just like it is. And with FSR 3 set to performance resolution at about 900p here, you definitely can, but it really takes a toll on the graphics quality. And this is such a beautiful game, I really wanted to leave it at 1080. And even with FSR set to balanced, it does take a fidelity hit, but uh, I think it still looks a lot better than going to performance. And right there, you can see we're in the mid 50s right now. So we're going to head back into the settings and enable AMD's frame generation. And it works really well with this game, especially with those higher TDPs. Now, if you did want to run this at a lower wattage on battery, you will have to drop the resolution down on most of the stuff that we've seen here, but it can work out at 15 to 18 watts pretty well. At the very bottom here, frame gen is now on. And instead of running this game in the low 50s, we're in the low 70s. So we did gain quite a bit with this. And I'll tell you, every once in a while, I have seen it still dip under 60 when there's a lot of particles on screen. But again, with the way I've got it set up at 1080 medium, there's still room to work. We could go into those settings, tweak them a little bit, turn a few things down to low and see some great performance out of this game. But, but you know, if I'm running at a higher wattage, these are the settings that I've been using. And right there, you can see it goes right there under 60, but comes right back up. And the final one I wanted to test here was Horizon Forbidden West. With this, I did have to take it down to 900p. This has just been a hard game to run on iGPUs. Even at the lowest settings, 720 with FSR set to ultra performance, we're still under 60. And even with frame gen on at 900p, it's kind of hard pressed to keep it there all the way. I mean, we went into the teens with this and we're using that 30 watt TDP. So we've basically got the Legion Go maxed out right now. And we could go down to 720, but, you know, I wanted a little higher resolution here. And I know it's not much. It's only 900p. I've got kind of a custom low preset. It's not completely at very low. 900p. FSR 3 is set to performance, but I've got frame gen off. So we're going to go ahead and enable it now. Make sure everything's saved. We're kind of stationary right now, over 60. Let's go ahead and get into the world and see exactly what happens. This has just been one that, you know, has given me issues on basically everything. Even higher-end GPUs when this first released, I will admit it has gotten a little better. And just to put it into perspective for you, we were seeing this kind of performance when Spider-Man Remastered released. But over all of the game updates and driver updates from AMD, we've been seeing some decent performance without frame gen on. So I think we will see better down the road with this one, but it's probably just a little ways off. 
Either way, with all of the games we took a look at in this video, frame gen can definitely help out with the Legion Go, even at lower wattages. But again, you will need to lower that resolution down with most of the stuff that we tested here. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Super happy with this new update from Lenovo, and it's definitely been a long time coming. Wanted to see this a while ago, but unfortunately it took them a little while to get this out. The device does feel a lot better with this new software. I just think it gives it a much more modern look. And overall, with FSR 3.1 and frame generation on the games that do support it, we're seeing some awesome performance out of these handheld gaming devices. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Legion Go, I'll leave some links down below. And like always, thanks for watching.